Well, today we had really awful news about the economy showing a slowdown that caught a lot of people by surprise, but not our next guest, who saw it coming and said right here on Scoreboard over a month ago. Take a listen. Yeah, it's amazing to me that in the last 10 days, these economic numbers come out and people are saying, oh, we're disappointed. If they're disappointed, it means, they're expect it means they bought into the lie, the lie that there, there was a recovery. There was no recovery. That, of course, was Patrick Byrne, founder and CEO of Overstock.com. He is, in our view, a bona fide now economic guru. He is also more in touch with consumer trends than just about anybody on the planet through his business, which is also known as O.co. And we are happy to have him back with us tonight. You're my guru, Patrick. I mean, you, you just get things right on. But once again, we get these awful numbers. They revised this, the first quarter from 1.9%, uh, which is already anemic, down to 0.4%, which is practically nothing. And everybody's surprised. You weren't. Mm. Now, there's a, there's a very good website named Shadow Government Statistics where an economist named John Williams is always unscrambling the reported numbers back to the actuals. And, if you, and I follow that closely. And I, I, it hasn't just started in the last few years. There's been a lot of rubber in the yardstick. Yeah. Warren Buffett always says, be, af be afraid of someone who shoots an arrow into a blank sheet of paper and then goes up and paints a bullseye around it. <laughs> That's exact. Well, the bottom line is, is that the first set of numbers that we get, they're cooked numbers, aren't they? Because we always get these revisions. Right. They're cooked numbers. They're doing everything they can. But this has been going on for some time. But they're doing what they can to make inflation look lower than it is and growth look higher. And they keep changing the definitions of how we calculate certain numbers in order to accomplish that. So if you if you go back and if we calculated inflation like we did in 1980, we'd be running pretty close to 10 percent now. But they just keep taking things out of the basket and they're yeah. proposing taking more things out of it. I do want to emphasize this is not coming from this administration solely. This has right. been a game that has been played to one degree oh, or another sure. for decades now. Oh, sure. But, but there are things we can do about it. I mean, just when things look their worst, at least to me, it looks like we may be actually going into another recession, uh, at least one quarter of downturn. We almost had that. Just when things are looking worst, they're thinking of raising taxes, not only the ones that we hear about, but also little taxes that, that we don't often hear about, which affect companies like yours, like the Internet tax, right? Right. Right. They, they don't get the joke. And the joke is the business model is broken. We have a, we're going the way of any mob rule where it's, it's more politically popular to spend and it's less politically popular to tax and the difference is a deficit. And, you know, you can play that game for about 40 or 50 years. Our business model has been tax 18, spend 22 percent of the yeah. GDP. It's now widened to 15 and 25. You can only do that so many years before it blows up on you, and that's where we were. So they have to rethink. they got to simplify and rethink the tax code. If you want it to be progressive, do it with a negative income tax. And they, they, they've got to get – the problem is every little loophole in the tax code has its own constituency, its own industry who is fighting for it. So they, they really – well, it's not going to happen until there's a collapse. Then hopefully someone will come through and just wipe the slate clean. Well, the president, of course, is, is blaming not raising the debt ceiling is the reason why uh, chaos is about to happen. And, of course, if they do downgrade the U.S. debt, he's going to say, well, it's because they didn't raise the debt ceiling. It's because they didn't give us power to borrow even more money. That's what he's going to say. Well, the People believe him? I think he's been making matters worse. I really think both sides are largely still playing the same old tug of war. It takes a, a, a brand new vision, and the new vision should be a balance, a vote on a balanced budget amendment. Now, it would be wrong for the Republicans to hold a, to a gun to the head of the American people and say, we won't, we won't give you the raise without winning a balanced budget amendment, but the Democrats have been holding off a, a vote on a BBA for 30 years. Yep. I think the Republicans ought to say, just give us the vote and we'll raise the debt ceiling. Yeah, I agree. By just the way, one, for one reason vote. why you usually see much further into the future than most people is because you look for these underlying things going on in the economy that most people don't see. You have a new website called DeepCapture.com. DeepCapture.com looks kind of below the surface. Tell us a little bit of that, about that before you go, because a lot of people want to check it out. Okay. Uh, uh, DeepCapture.com, we've actually been publishing for three or four years, but it's just recently gotten a lot of attention. 
I, I believe since 2005 that there's a form of economic warfare being practiced against the United States. It includes, in particular, the Genovese family. With them come Russian organized crime, mm. ties to both the Iranian regime and Saudi extremist financiers. We have reporters who work at Deep Capture. It's thoroughly documented. Uh, and I think there's economic warfare being practiced against the U.S., and it's coming in through the, fin oh, the financial system, and in particular, the settlement system. And just this Monday, this administration, I got to give them credit, they signed an executive order s declaring a national emergency, s saying that the, the financial system is under attack from transnational organized crime. Right. Well, that's exactly true. Very interesting. It couldn't come at a worse time for us, just when our economy is weakest. Patrick Byrne, O.com, no Overstock.com, otherwise known as. Great to see you, Patrick. Have a good weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Coming up on deck, you heard Patrick Byrne's economic forecast. It's not a good one, but is there any reason for optimism? And does raising the debt ceiling help or hurt us all long term? Some of the best economic minds are here to score the economy. Coming up, and John Boehner's leadership. What do you think about it? Does he deserve that leadership position? Is it a, a sell or a hold?